Buckhouse Podcast for week 12 of the 2023 season. I'm Nick with producer Brad making it go behind the scenes. Hey, hey. And last but never, ever least, head coach Ashley Chastain. Good afternoon. All right. So, coach, Kevin is gone again. You're back and Kevin's gone. I think there's something, I don't know. I, I hope neither one of you are taking this very personally. I know. I haven't seen him, I feel like, in a while. But he's <laughs> no, busy. So, I know. I know he's busy with his kids and spring break. And is he on another vacation? Is that where he is? <laughs> no, he is at a ball field tonight. Um, they had a makeup game um, that was scheduled for tonight. So he is at ball field uh, watching his son play. Um, and um, so that's that, you know, he just, he's a dad first, right? So it's, it's awesome right. uh, that, that he gets to go do that. And um, yeah. you know, I told him, I was like, Hey man, it's all right. We got you. We can, we can handle this. So uh, he is, uh, he's doing that. Uh, for those of you out there, uh, I mentioned that, that Ashley's back. Um, if you missed last week's show, um, we had uh, associate head coach uh, Taylor White on here and she absolutely crushed it. Um, so if, if you missed Taylor last week, go back and watch that. Um, it's it's worth it. We spent a little time getting to know her, kind of the way we did with Ashley when we did the very first show. Um, so we got that going. And, um, and now Coach Chastain is back, but Kevin's gone again. So um, he's out, out at a ball field. Actually, Ashley, um, you would find this interesting. Um, Kevin's son um, hit his first uh, walk-off this weekend uh for uh for the 11u athletics um it was a walk-off triple wow uh, yeah that's so, awesome yeah he was really excited about that and um uh, everything so uh yeah cool stuff and they are back at it you know how coach you know better than anybody that 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 travel ball life you know how that is <laughs> Yeah, it's intense, especially as they get a little older. It's um, it's a lot, but I'm glad, I'm glad they're enjoying it, and he's getting to be around uh, the kids and and be there for it. It's um, special years. I mean, my my dad and I still talk about all of our travel ball years, even to this day. So many stories and memories that we reminisce on, and and we'll never forget. So it's special. Yeah, so uh, he'll be back, but uh, yeah. just not this week. So we'll, uh, we'll have someone on, uh, we'll have someone else on next week. So he'll be back. And then, you know, the following <laughs> week when I'm back on, he'll, he'll have something to do. I see how this is going. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think either one of you need to take it personally. Uh, it's just, yeah. it, everybody's busy, you know, it's just the way yeah, it is. So. That's right. It's all good. Producer Brad and I, we'll, we'll just stay here and, and, and make it, make it work out. So it's all good. Um, we've got uh, we've only got one game to talk about this week, Coach. Uh, so we can we can move through that kind of quickly and start talking about um, uh, about maybe some some scenarios and the week you got ahead and, and things like that. But um, we do need to talk about the the game against Longwood uh, here for a minute. Um, now I will admit um, I was was not at the Sioux. Um, I was was down at um, at Truist Park or Truist Field in Uptown Charlotte for the for the baseball game, um, but we were following uh, we, we following you guys on the phone uh, trying to get trying to get enough uh, connectivity to watch video and following through Twitter. Randy Peterson was sitting right behind me um, mm -hmm. giving the updates. But you guys had a, a very back and forth game with Longwood, which you we yeah. talked about with with Taylor that that, that was going to be an intense game. People, Longwood's not really a, a brand name, but that's a good club, um, and they were coming in with a lot of momentum. Um, but the, the gals trailed seven three, and won nine to seven. So that that was yeah. it was quite a comeback win uh, for the for the gals. Uh, why don't you walk us through that one? Yeah, um, it was really intense um, here at the Sioux last Wednesday. Uh, we started barefoot. Um, we gave up two runs in the top of the first, and it was kind of like an offensive night, really. It just had that feel to it from the start. I was um, really proud of the offense. We answered right away in the bottom of the first and scored three runs to Longwood's two. So we were up 3-2 going into the second inning. Um, and the offense, like as a whole, just had that look and had that presence in the box that – 
they they were on it like i mean they just from the top to the bottom we had really good production all the way through but washington got on the bottom of the first and then cass homered and then bailey homered right after it and so um i think we, we were a little down going into the bottom of the first with them scoring two runs in the top of the first and then just the way that um, you know, Krupa and Denoy performed that first inning. Um, it gave us kind of our win back and our confidence back. And, um, you know, we put Maddie right out from the bullpen in the second. Uh, she threw well for a couple innings. And then we gave, they gave, we gave up a big hit. Um, let me see. It was the top of the – I'm looking at it here. Top of the fifth. Uh, we gave up a big hit. And so they took the lead again. It was seven to three. And then in the bottom of the fifth, we answered again with six runs. Um, and so it was um, just kind of the story of the offense um, answering three runs with three runs to their two and then six runs to their five. Um, I was really proud of the offense. Um, and it was, there was a lot of hits on the, on the day. And then Gress threw the last two innings and looked really good at the end of the game. So um it was a tight game. I think we knew it was going to be that way going into it. Um, you know, so I was proud of, uh, proud of the offense. That was the highlight for me. The sassy pony decided it was time to do something a little different and get a save instead of a W, right? Yep. Yeah, a little different for her, um, which was the plan. I mean, we didn't want to start her, um, you know, and, and we really didn't get her up and ready until the fifth inning. Um, and she threw 21 pitches last Wednesday night. Um, we, we had her available because we didn't play this past weekend. We went through our bye weekend. Um, and so we had her available. I just really wanted to get some other, our, other of our arms out on the field uh, with barefoot and right. Um, and then knowing that we had Sam. So once we regained um, the lead, we put Sam back out on the field to finish the last two innings and it was, it kind of worked out perfectly. So um, yeah, really proud of them for that one. feels like a long time ago because we haven't played since then. <laughs> right. Right. So Maddie did go four innings and picked up the mm -hmm. W Sam got uh, the save with two innings, but um, yeah, some of those offensive numbers, uh, Cass had a, a double and a Homer with four ribbies. Uh, Boo yeah. is two, two with two homers. Um, mm -hmm. Just doing boo things. Um, mm -hmm. um, Ella had an RBI. Uh, Corey doubled. Uh, it was like Kaya Garrett came in in, in another pinch hit roll um, yeah. and, and an RBI for you as well. So um, on a night where you on a night where you trail seven three but win nine seven, there's going to be some fireworks. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bailey. Um, I think Cass was kind of the the, the tone setter of the offense um, in the two hole, and then I was really good to see Bailey have the night that she had um, just, she struggled a little bit out in Texas in our North Texas series and um, was pitched really tough. I mean, as you guys saw through that mm -hmm. series was, she really wasn't throwing a lot of balls that she could hit hard when we we're in Texas, but she struggled. And so mentally coming back, um, you know, it was good to see her have such a good night at the plate last Wednesday. Um, you know, but I, I thought that the way that Cass was in the box gave Bailey a little bit of confidence behind her and, um, you know, Kai Garrett doing Kai Garrett things. I mean, she's been incredible for us in the pinch hit role. Um, and it was really cool. We got Michaela Mitchell a start in left field. Um, she was in the eight hole for us and, and played really good defense um, in left. So, you know, it's, it's really cool. If you've been following us or watching us, I mean, our lineup is pretty consistent a week to week. Um, so whenever we can get some other people in the order as, as starters, um, you know, it's it's a really cool situation and opportunity. So I was proud of uh, Kayla Mitchell for the way that she played. She was on base a lot. And she played great defense and left. Um, so it was a great night for us. Now, the. And as you mentioned, you didn't play this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. you, you had a bye. I'm I'm assuming. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that that off weekend had something to do with um, with Southern Miss and Marshall leaving the league this year. Is that is, is that basically yeah. what necessitated that off week? Yeah, yeah. So we inherited a bye weekend. Um, everyone in the conference inherited a bye weekend. So you have the choice to play games if you want to or need to, um, or um, or not. You could take it off. And um, to be really transparent, we had scheduled games um, on the weekend, um, even in the fall. So we had some games scheduled in the fall, and uh, those through those fell through late in the fall, um, close to the winter months, and then we. We scheduled a couple more, um, you know, and then just 
with where we're at, um, you know, we made the decision. We felt like it was best to cancel those. If you, so you go on our website, you can see that they were canceled. That was several weeks ago. Uh, a mutual, we mutually agreed to cancel that double header last Friday in Wilmington. And, um, you know, now that we're past the bye weekend, we practice today on Monday, which is a little unusual for us. We've only had a few days this, this spring since we started season uh, where we've practiced on Monday. Um, but we did practice today. It was full full practice and um, the, the girls looked really fresh and looked really good. And I challenged them after the Longwood game last Wednesday that we were going to practice hard on Thursday and Friday. We actually did some live at bats on Friday and some base running and just some things that, um, you know, we haven't been able to design our practices like that for a couple months uh, with season starting. So Thursday and Friday, we practiced really well. And um, and then today we practiced hard and, and I thought the girls looked really great after a weekend off. Um, so it's kind of felt like fall a little bit the past couple of days, just the way that we've been, um, you know, practicing. And we see it as a blessing and, and we're really grateful for a couple of days to kind of nitpick some things and to really deep dive into some things that, you know, can make us better going into now week 12 um, of season. So. They looked good today. They're fresh. Um, they lifted. Um, so, so far, so good. We had a handful that went home. You know, if they live a couple hours away, they went home and um, spent some time with their family for two days. And then a lot of them were here at the baseball series. I was at the baseball series this week against UAB. So if you were at the Hayes, you saw a lot of the softball girls, the Niner gals there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, of course, they were at the spring game um, Saturday night uh, for football and supporting what they're doing over there. So, um, you know, overall, I think it was a great reset and, um, you know, we'll see how they handle it Wednesday in Chapel Hill. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's it's easy um, for um, consumers of college athletics uh, that to to forget the kinds of schedules that these student athletes are on mm -hmm. uh, the practice, the games, the travel, the class, mm -hmm. the projects, the homework, all that stuff. Um, so th this weekend uh, was surely a good um, a good mental break um, as much as anything uh, this this weekend being able to kind of get away from the game a little bit. You guys practice hard, but you get a little bit of time off and no travel involved, none of that stuff. And um, I, I would imagine if, if I had to guess that that's going to pay some dividends for for the gals as, as you get kind of back up because uh, the, the stretch run is going to be pretty intense here as we're going to we're going to talk about it in a minute. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know that 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 sounds like it, I, you, you call it a blessing. Um, it, 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 it seems like it came at a good time um, in the schedule. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Um, you know, we've been really blessed with um, just kind of I mean, we've been healthy really all year, um, but when I say healthy, we haven't really lost anyone to a major injury this season, um, or at least in the spring. And that doesn't mean we don't have bumps and bruises, though. I mean, right. those are two different things being, you know, right. um, sore and tight and um, versus like an injury. So, yeah, I mean, our kids were, as we talked, we're week 12, um, sore, tight, just kind of a day, a couple days of um you know, rest and more sleep and less travel. And it, it is such a grind at this point in the year um, with as much travel and just a, how many games we play away. Um, and on top of, like you said, we're, we're about to enter finals time where, you know, they're watching their grades and, you know, trying to get in final projects and, you know, yeah. internship plans. And, you know, there's kind of, you know, the next steps that they have to plan for over the next couple of months. So, um, yeah, they've got a lot on their plate. They have study hall hours, they have lifts, you know, they have all kinds of stuff going on. So, um, you know, we, we see it as a blessing to have a couple of days to reset and, um, you know, we're really thankful for it. And, um, uh, they were in great spirits today at practice. So I was yeah. glad to see that. <laughs> a reset for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. to your point, combining several of those topics, talking about going, going to get to check out some games and, and even um, some of the gals are already doing internships and stuff like that. I ran into mm -hmm. um, ran into Maddie Sherrill at the Hayes um, mm -hmm. on, on Sunday, and she was doing a marketing internship. I thought she was yeah. just coming to check out the game. She was like, no, I'm on the job. I'm working. I'm doing marketing interns. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, right? Mm -hmm. So all good stuff. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's take a look here at where we stand. Um, 
the the record here on the season is 26 and 17, 12 and 5 in league. Um, actually, what happened by having the off week, um, the 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 gals actually moved back to the top of the standings, um, mm-hmm. up a, a half game lead. Um, now, what's interesting, and uh, producer Brad's got the standings up there. What I want to draw everyone's attention to is if you look at at how this plays here, um, the uh, the Niner gals have already won a series at Florida Atlantic. So there's a tiebreaker there. Um, the next two weekends, if you follow this, are um, at Louisiana Tech and then UAB at the Sioux to close the season. So those are the um, two main competitors, along with North Texas is hanging there at 11-7, which we know how that went. Um, but, um, man, this is getting ready to be intense, Coach. Uh, Not our gals are at a 38 RPI, a half game lead in the standings, 26 wins on a season. And these next two weekends, oh, not to mention, let me just throw in that that this weekend you're going to Louisiana Tech um, and and they're hosting the, the conference tournament. But, um, yeah, to, to your point, this, the, the stretch run is going to be going to be pretty, um, pretty intense here. Now, I'm going to give you uh, I'm gonna, we're going to get to talking about uh, about this weekend with with uh, going to Louisiana Tech. But I do want to draw uh, your attention to uh, a little matchup you guys have got going this Wednesday. Um, you guys are going to load up the bus and head up to Chapel Hill uh, to take on the Tar Heels at six o'clock and a midweek matchup. Um, if you uh, I'm sure plenty of Niners will be making that trip up to Chapel Hill. Um, easy drive. Uh, but it's also available on um, on the ACC Network Extra, so you can stream that as well from your home. But, um, Coach, you you, uh, you and the gals are headed up to Chapel Hill on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, that's always a really exciting game for us on the schedule. It has been the past couple years, and um, we're really excited to get back up there. Um, you know, I think – it's an in-state rivalry feel, um, you know, that's what it's kind of created. And uh, so we, we prepared for them today and then we're going to prepare again for them tomorrow. And, um, you know, their game is a lot of short game, uh, a lot of speed, a lot of slap. It's um, it's a very unique um, to them. And so, you know, today at practice, you know, we did a lot of bunt defense. Um, we worked a lot of rundowns. We just worked a lot of things like I spoke to where in the spring, sometimes you don't have the practice time to do some of that stuff. Um, but today we, we spent time uh, with the pitching staff in the infield and, you know, just making sure we're prepared for what we're going to face, which is a lot of slap and a lot of run and a lot of bunt, um, a lot of small ball and that kind of stuff. And then offensively, um, you know, they've got a lefty that we expect to possibly face. So today, Taylor White really focused on um, some left-handed curveballs with the with the girls. Um, so, yeah, it's an intense matchup. Um, you know, I think for us. In our locker room, I mean, it's kind of a sense of pride uh, to go up to Chapel Hill and, and beat the, the Tar Heels at their place. Um, so I think the I think the team is really ready for it. I think that they're really focused on that game. Um, you know, that's kind of how they roll. We're focused on Chapel Hill until Wednesday about, you know, 9 p.m. when it's over. And then, you know, our focus then turns to La Tech. Um, you know, the, the kids, they see the standings. They know, um, you know, they're following it just as much as everybody else is. And, you know, this week, this past weekend when we were off, I think we were all watching the FAU Western Kentucky series mm-hmm. um, with how that was going to go. And, um, you know, just kind of watching all that stuff. So they're keeping an eye on that. But I think today I could really tell. And, you know, tomorrow we'll prepare some more for, for UNC on Wednesday. That's their focus. And then we'll get on a plane and make the the trek to Ruston, which everyone knows is a little difficult to get to. So, um, but we're excited about it. You know, just an in-state game, um, you know, two great programs going at it um, here in the state of North Carolina, which we take a lot of pride in. Is this uh, is there any truth to the rumor that this is being referred to as the Taylor Wyke Invitational? <laughs> I haven't heard that, so uh, I'm not so sure. I haven't heard that yet, but I could see how people would say that. Um, maybe, you know, you guys, maybe that's the rumor that I just started. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, 
you know, you guys had a chance to to get to know Taylor um, a little bit last week on the call or on the podcast. And, um, you know, she's awesome and has been with us since day one. And I can't I can't express her impact on this program, you know, with where we're at right now and and how much of an integral part she has played in that in that, you know, and if you have any of the Niner gals on the podcast, you know, they're going to sing her praises and, you know, just how awesome she is. But she is really competitive and um, there is nothing more that she wants to do than go beat the Tar Heels on Wednesday night. So she this is one of her favorite games of the year. She looks forward to it every year. Um, So um, she'll be. She'll be in um, great form on the way up to Chapel Hill on the bus. Um, you know, she'll probably incentivize the kids in some way to win the game. <laughs> well, I'll probably have to stop and get them ice cream on the way home or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's there's a lot of things we here at Diamond Niner Report appreciate you about you, uh, Coach. Um, <laughs> but but one of them is that you know when we're talking to Woody or now Taylor we have to kind of be cordial towards the Tar Heels. I mean, uh, you know, we just kind of dance around it, you know, (laughs) but you know, when we're talking to you, we don't have to do that. We can just, we can just be ourselves and be like, go, go beat the crap out of them. Would you? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We we don't have to pretend we don't even have to, we don't even have to go like that. Um, Taking a look at their, at their numbers. Um, the, the Tar Heels are coming in. They're 23 and 25, 11 and 9 in the ACC, 71 RPI. Uh, they did sweep NC State last weekend, so they're mm-hmm. they're coming um, coming in feeling good. But um, yeah, um, you know, kind kind of an interesting thought for for 49er fans. You know, your Niner gals are your Niner gals are actually um, having a little better season right now. So we should go into that matchup with a whole lot of confidence. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we've we've beaten in the past couple of years. And so I think our players, um, I think our players a couple of years ago, um, you know, year one, year two might've been a little bit more intimidated by the matchup, but we've, um, I think where we're at right now, like, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I mean, I think that our, our players, especially those that are returning that have been in those matchups the last two years, um, you know, they're ready to, to compete hard and um, you know, they're smart. I mean, they look at stuff, they know that it's going to be a really great game. And um, I think, I think they feel really prepared for it. Um, You know, it's, it's a special game for Taylor. I mean, believe me, there's nothing more than she wants to do than beat them on Wednesday night. Um, Like I said, she's the ultimate competitor herself um, as a player and now as a coach. Uh, But, you know, she played for Donna Papa and Donna has been at North Carolina for, 35 plus years, I believe, um, you know, she's been a staple of North Carolina softball, uh, for a really long time. And, you know, Taylor has a lot of respect for her, you know, as, as her former coach and, you know, they still talk often. And so there's just a lot of respect there. Um, you know, but when the game starts, it's about winning the game. You know, it's the same way that I feel about Beverly Smith at South Carolina. Uh, when the game starts, it's about the business of winning the game. Um, you know, but outside of that, you have a lot of respect for the coach that grew you up and gave you an opportunity and taught you the things that, you know, as a coach now that you you carried on. Um, so we respect Donna. Taylor respects Donna a lot. And it'll be a really fun evening um, in a lot of ways. Sure. Um, <laughs> let's let's move ahead and, and talk about next weekend. Um mm-hmm. And I know you guys are locked in on on Wednesday night right now, but um, when when the time comes, you're going to be ready to, to take on um, Louisiana Tech. And as I did mention before, th- this is important for a number of reasons. It's um, the conference the conference race. Yeah, there we go. Good old good old conference USA TV for everybody um, this weekend. Um, which uh, folks feel you know, hey, you should feel good about being having TV listed. Um, on the baseball side at Western Kentucky, we can't even find out if that's going to be streamed or not on the conference USA TV. So yeah. Um, we, you know, it's good. This should be our last trip to rust in Louisiana, uh, as in the regular season, because we'll be going back, uh, for the conference tournament here in a few weeks. Now they are 29 and 18, 11 and seven with a 94 RPI. Um, they swept UTEP last weekend um, and are right in the thick of the conference race, Coach. So um, mm-hmm. tell us what we can expect to see this weekend in Ruston. 
Yeah, you know, I think um, we've actually never been to Ruston since I've been here um, at Charlotte. It's just kind of how it's all worked out with, um, you know, drawing home and away and the COVID year and all that stuff that happened a long time ago. So this will be my first trip to Ruston. Um, you know, they have a full turf surface, um, their full turf. They, they had to redo all of their athletic facilities not too long ago due to a tornado that came through. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think their facilities are great. I think they're really nice. They're updated, new, uh, but it is full turf. So the hops will play true. I think it'll play a little fast. Uh, typically, you know, your hops are good on turf. It just plays a little bit faster. So um, you know, we'll prepare for that. We'll practice on it and uh, be ready for it. And then, you know, the haze over here is all turf. So, uh, you know, we're lucky enough to, you know, be able to hop over and, and possibly take some ground balls before we leave on Thursday or at the haze just on, you know, turf and field. Um, so that's a little bit of a different element for us, one that we're preparing for. Um, you know, overall, I think La Tech can pitch. If you look at their numbers, you look at their stats, um, they have four kids that have thrown significant amount of innings for them that all have seen success. So I think that's what we expect from them this weekend is that they're going to challenge our offense. Um, and so I think that's how the game is going to be won is, is how good we are against their staff. And because they've thrown so many pitchers this year, you know, it will be – um, a grind of preparation for us. You know, it's a lot of film. Um, you know, we're not really watching film or on one or two arms for the weekend. We're watching film on four or five arms on the weekend and just making sure that we give our kids a good look at everyone we expect to face. Um, and so that list of pitchers is a little bit longer for us this weekend going to rest in. Um, but I think, you know, that's, that's going to be the name of the game for us as uh, figuring out their pitching staff and just and being ready for that. Um, they have multiple arms. Um, that we're going to see all weekend that have had success so far. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think on, on our pitching end, I mean, just continuing to give ourselves a chance to win. That's what I ask of our pitching staff week in and week out. Um, you know, Sam Grass has, you know, done that over and over and over, giving us a chance to win. So I think you'll see her throw significant innings for us uh, this weekend in, in Ruston. Um, you know, especially with having some time off this past weekend, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's, she threw a bullpen today with me and, and looked great. Um, you know, Lena Elkins threw today, looked great. So, um, yeah, I mean, just give us a chance to win on the defensive side of the ball, play great defense, and then, you know, let's figure out their pitching staff. Um, so, but yeah, they're in the thick of the hunt. Um, and so we're, we're looking forward to it. And I think where I like, what I like about where we're at right now um, is that we control our destiny. Um, you know, and so it's always a good feeling as a coach that you're in control of what what you're doing the rest of the way. I've told the team a couple of times Thursday, Friday, even today, like, hey, like we've had some really awesome games. We've had some really big games, um, you know, in our season so far. But the the biggest games um, are ahead of us, really, at this point, which is really cool to, to think about here in the next uh two to three weeks, you know, this is it. And we control our destiny. And, um, you know, so if we go to rest and take care of business, we're going to continue to control our destiny, which is where we want to stay. That's where we want to sit. It's just being able to control, um, you know, what happens for us seeding into the tournament and into the NCAA postseason. Yeah. So, you know, that's a great, great point you make there um, about the turf field um, and going over to the haze and, and taking some rounders. Um, I have not been uh, – I've been to Ruston. I uh, went to the conference tournament there, the baseball tournament, um, year before last. Um, and and I, I did not see their softball, um, their field, but um, obviously went to the baseball facility. Really nice. Um, that Ruston what, took, a, took a direct hit from, from a, a tornado a few years ago and, and not just specifically Ruston, but, but, you know, specifically their baseball and softball um, mm -hmm. athletic facilities were completely destroyed and had to be rebuilt. Um, so both those facilities were, were really top notch. Um, and mm -hmm. from looking at the baseball facility, I can, can only imagine what the, what the softball facility is like as well. So uh, um, yeah, that's, that's going to be going to be an interesting challenge. Now, I know what you're going to say that you're, you know, you're not looking that far ahead and all this stuff, but as an observer, like producer Brad and myself, that, that last weekend of the, uh, of the regular season against UAB has the, the potential to be 
like really, really intense uh, with um, there could be uh, the, the head to head matchups going to be intense and there could be a significant amount of scoreboard watching going on. And I mean, there's all kind of scenarios. This is but this is this is what you play for. Right. To get down to the end of the season and and be in these matchups, which, you know, have implications. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it feels like to be at the top of the league, you know, is that it's tight. Um, you know, people are right underneath you chasing you. Um, so, yeah, that's it's just kind of, I think, comes with the territory. Um, you know, I think that Conference USA as a whole is better this year. If you look at the RPIs, the RPIs are a little bit more elevated or elevated in the good way. Right. So like where we'd want them to be this year um, in the conference than they have been in the previous years. So, um, you know, it's La Tech had a great year last season uh, with a new coach in the 22 year. UAB has got a new staff this year in the 23 season. FAU has a new staff this year in the 23 season. And, um, you know, we UAB and FAU, along with a few others, are coming with us to the American. And, you know, and so it's just good. Like, it's just a lot of good ball. Uh, it's a lot of good scenarios for us to be in, in pursuit of a championship. You know, we just feel so fortunate and grateful that we've put ourselves in a position to be in pursuit of this and to be you know, in, in the conversation and if for it to be tight. And you're so right about the UAB weekend. Um, you know, I think we're getting to the time of the year where there is some thought into the future, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of, um, you know, scenarios and what could happen. And, you know, we just, we play in Reston this weekend. Um, and then we're going back to Reston two weeks later for the conference tournament. And so I'm really thankful and excited that we're going to be there, um, you know, not too long um, for these couple of days for the series and then not too long go back for the tournament. Um, so I think our, our team will be familiar with the facility and, um, you know, have just played there. I think that works in our favor. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, we, we're, we're starting to get to the time of the year where, you know, you're thinking about some of these things that are on the horizon over the next seven to 14 days. And um, like I said, like, we're just really blessed and fortunate to be in the situation that we're in and, and our kids have earned it. I mean, we've played really well uh, through conference this year and, um, you know, I'm proud of them and, you know, they, they've, they've earned to be at the top and um, they're going to play hard. That's the one thing I know about them, you know, over the next two weeks with LaTeX and UB, UAB here at the Sioux um, that last weekend for senior weekend. Um, they're going to play hard. I mean, they're not going to go down without a fight. So if, if it's going to come down to the wire there with UAB that last weekend, depending upon what happens this weekend, um, you know, it's going to be exciting. So I'd urge you to be there, um, you know, not only to see what happens uh, on the scoreboard, just to also support uh, the seniors that we have that weekend that will be playing here on campus at the Sioux for the last time. Yeah, that's that's going to be fun, and we'll we'll do a we'll do a senior day edition uh, coming up. But yeah, it's it's a great time of year when you think about it because uh, it's it, you're playing meaningful games right now, and that's that's what you that's what you work all year round to do. And you guys are on it. You can catch those games. We said Conference USA TV. That's uh, that's Friday night at seven, Saturday at three, and Sunday at two. Um, and and Hang on, folks. We're getting close to canceling all those Conference USA TV subscriptions. We're getting really, really close. Um, on on the softball side, I, I guess this is the last weekend you would you would need it. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we still need it. We, we still need it at least one more time on the baseball side, uh, potentially this weekend. I think once or twice. But um, yeah, from a softball perspective, you can you can get ready to cancel those Conference USA TV subscriptions, and that's. That's a cool thing. That's a, it's going to be a good feeling <laughs> when I get to hit the cancel button on on that subscription. All right. Well, we're about out of time this week, folks, but hopefully you've gotten your fill of Niner Gal softball talk. Um, you've gotten to hear from the, uh, the skipper herself and get ready for a big week, Coach. Any, la any last comments before we get out of here? It's a big week for us. So, um, you know, just follow along closely, uh, big game Wednesday. And then, um, you know, 
I'll let you know what happens with our travel saga on Thursday. As you know, Rustin is um, a little bit isolated as far as, yeah. uh, you know, travel. So the Niner gals are flying into Jackson, Mississippi on Thursday afternoon, and we will be driving two and a half hours to Rustin. And then on Sunday for the return to Charlotte, we are flying out of Monroe, Louisiana, which is only 30 minutes from Rustin. Yeah. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted on any travel um, you know, stories that we might have for next week. <laughs> you, can, you can stop by and see the Duck Dynasty guys on the way out of town, out of, yeah. out of Monroe. Go hang out with Uncle Si or something like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, Rust, Rustin is a, an interesting travel um, travel predicament. So, I, I'll i just say it this way, Coach. I hope the travel stories are very boring. <laughs> yes, that would be nice. Hey, when is planned? Um, that, that's the story. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hopefully all the travel arrangements are very, very boring. Okay, folks, that's it for us this week. We're all out of time. Appreciate you folks tuning in. Um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, think about subscribing to our YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to this on uh, on Spotify as well. You can find Diamond Niner Report on, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, still never TikTok. Not happening. Just not ever going to happen. We love hearing from you. Uh, say hello on social media. Reach out that way. Or if you're old fashioned like uh, we are, just say hello at the ballpark. We like talking to you there as well. Okay. This has been Nick for producer Brad, for coach Ashley Chastain. We're saying we'll see you at the Sioux. Go Niners. See you.